Okay, so this is my series on Python and physics. Uh, I'm not trying to teach physics, although you might learn it. I'm trying to help people implement Python in their courses or, or use it to learn physics, that's fine too. Uh, so I'm, I'm focusing more on the Python side of it. Here's my program from the previous lesson. Uh, I think that was lesson number five, so this is six. And so that was on uh, using, finding the path of a particle with air resistance. And I don't really care about that because there wasn't anything Python in there. But let's just do this. So here are two, let me run this. These are two balls. The yellow one has no air resistance. The cyan one does have air resistance, but they're launched to the same angle and the same velocity. Okay, and you'll notice that uh, the, the one with uh, no air drag obviously goes further. But what if I change the angle so that, that's 73 degrees. Let's do um, 43 degrees. Okay, so the yellow ball goes a lot further, but so does the cyan ball. But the question is, if what, what angle gives me the maximum range? And um, so let's do that for both no air resistance, and then we'll do find the maximum range, which you know is 45 degrees. I'm sure you already know that, if it's on level ground. And then we'll do it with air resistance. It's going to be great. Okay, but w to do that, I really wanted to start over with these programs because I don't really want to make a visual animation of it anymore. Uh, I wanted to show you this visual part just so you can see that it does indeed um, have a different path. That's kind of cool. So let's go up here and uh, make a new program. So I'm going to go to New, Trinket, Glow Script, Python. Okay, so let's just start entering in some data. And I'm not going to make a visual. I still need G. G is equal to the gravitational field. Zero, and it's going to be in two dimensions, so I'm going to use vectors. Um, I need a ball. Okay, So I'm not going to show my ball. I'm just going to make it. So let's just give it a position. I'm going to say R equals, it's going to start at uh, vector 0, 0, 0. Who cares where it starts because you're not going to really look at it anyway. Now I need a launch angle, theta. I'm going to make, I'm going to launch a ball. Okay, just to get it working. And then um, and then we'll we'll do it again as with functions. I'll show you how to do a function. So let's say uh, theta is 30 times pi divided by 180. Uh, and I need that in radians. I think in degrees. Uh, now I need the initial velocity. So let's say v0 equals uh, 8. Uh, and v, let's just say p. p is the mo momentum. It's going to be, oh, I need the mass. M equals 0. Point, I did the same thing as before, 0. 0.50 grams. P equals M times V0 times a vector cosine theta, sine theta, 0. And this is the same thing I did before. The only thing difference is I'm not displaying it. Uh, okay, now I can say while R dot Y is greater than 0, do the following. I'm also going to need a graph. Let's make a graph. G1 equals graph. Let's do a trajectory because no one cares about time. So x title equals uh, x in meters. Is this big enough? Y title equals y in meters. And then let's make it a little bit smaller. So width equals 500, height equals 250. That makes it easier to see. And then F1 is going to be the plot. So it's going to be G curve, color equals color dot blue. I don't know why I always use blue. I just use blue. That's why I, I, blue makes it work for me. So then down here, I'm going to first uh, update the momentum. So I can, well, I can calculate the force. F equals... Uh, m times g. Now, just as a reminder, so g is a vector, m is a scalar. So when I multiply those together, I get a vector. So f is a vector. p equals p plus f times dt. So again, this is my momentum update formula. This takes the old value of momentum, it's a vector, adds f times delta t to it, and makes that the new momentum. Now I can update the position. r equals r plus p times 
dt divided by m. So p divided by m is the velocity at the end that I just calculated, which is not the correct velocity, but it's going to work. Uh, and then t equals t plus dt. And let's plot it. f1 dot plot, r dot x, r dot y. So r dot x is the x component of the position vector. <clears throat> I think this should work. And it didn't work. Oh, great. <laughs> well, it's not greater than zero, right? Because r dot y starts at zero. So let's say while it's greater than or equal to zero. It didn't, I didn't not work. It worked. It just was dumb. Now it didn't work. Can't find D. Haha. Uh -huh. Dummy. Okay. T equals zero. DT equals 0 0.01. Let's find that. <clears throat> Aha, now it works. Okay. Um, max range ball toss. I'm going to give you the code to this because that's what I do. Did it save? There it goes. It's just slow. <clears throat> okay. So it, it looks like it's working, right? Let's just run that again. So there's my trajectory. Uh, the, the, it Look, you'll notice here that it, it actually, the first plot, I plot it after I move it, so that's a little bit off the ground, and then it goes down a little below zero. Uh, I can fix that by just all things in Python. In numerical calculation, can be fixed by making a smaller time interval. Uh, so there, we're all happy. Okay, so now I could get the range. So <clears throat> since it started at the origin, let's print range equals uh, r dot x meters. That's how far it ended up. And I get 5.65. Now if I change this angle to let's say 45, I get 6.52. Now if I change it to 50, 6.5, remember that. Let's change this to 50. So it goes down. So you can see that <clears throat> as I increase my angle, I get the maximum range at 45, which we already knew. Um, and then and we can get it down lower. And this is something that I would love for students to do, just to manually change that and see how far it goes. And you could do something cool like this. Watch this. I could change this to uh, 1. So it doesn't start at the origin. It starts at x, uh, y equals 1. So now we're launching it off a table, and the range is different. And the maximum range is not at 45 degrees. Okay. So that's going to give us that right there. <clears throat> okay. Now what I want to do is to make a graph of the range as a function of launch angle. And then we can see if that is indeed the case. And in order to do that, I need to run all this code multiple times. So I think I'm going to do, just do this function today. Um, and then I will make another one with air drag later just because I don't want it to be too long. Okay, so let's make our first function. Um, let's, let's make a function, and we're going to, in Python, we make a function by saying def, and then we need to give a name of the function. I'm going to call this, uh, I'm trying to think of a good name, uh, Bob. And Bob's going to take the parameter uh, x and y. I mean, this is not for projectile motion. Okay, so now I put a colon, and then everything that's tab indented is part of that function. So it's going to take, I'm going to input, give it two values, x and y. I want to take those two values uh, and say temp equals x times y plus x plus y, x plus minus y. I just made up some function. I don't really care. And then I'm going to return that, that value temp. So I'm going to say return temp. Now, whenever I do something like this, bob two two. Let's print that. Print Bob 2, 2. So this is going to take uh, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2. So it's going to take x times y. So it's 2 times 2 is 4. And then it's going to say plus 2, minus 2. So it should return 4. So if I print this, I should get 4. And it didn't work. And I think if I change this to 0, yeah. Okay, there's something weird with GlowScript, uh, the newer one, and I'm not sure what the problem is, but it, it's working now. Okay, so 
<clears throat> that is your very first function. Now, there are some problems, you know, like what if I said up here x equals 2 and then our x equals 5, 4, and then I run this. What's going to happen? See, it doesn't it use it redefines x inside that function, which is weird and I know that's bad to do that, uh, but I'm just letting you know that's what's going on. Okay, so that's that's your function. They are super useful. The two things to remember, the couple things to remember that these are the parameters that you pass to the function and then you want to return something. And you can return a vector, you can return multiple values, you can return whatever you want. Okay, so let's get rid of all that. And let's make this <coughs> define uh, p range. So p range, I can't use range. I think range might be a reserved word. Let's use p range for projectile range. And I want to give it some parameters. Okay, so I could give it a whole bunch of stuff. I could give it um, the launch angle, the launch velocity, uh, and the initial position. Let's do that. I'm trying to think, should I just give it the initial y? Yeah. So let's say uh, the launch angle, theta, 0. I'm going to call it t theta. t theta. And then I'm going to say um, for temp theta. And then uh, t v 0. I think I can just call that v0. Uh, and then I can say r0. That's where it starts. So those are the three things I'm going to pass my function. Uh, now I want to do all this stuff. So this I'm going to, I don't need that. But I've already done this whole problem. I'm going to put this up here. Uh, and then I'm going to calculate, I'm going to put g in my function. So right there. Uh, I'm going to say, I don't need to say r0. r0 is a vector, v0 is a velocity. Uh, so I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. Uh, I do need the mass. I don't actually need the mass, but uh, I do need the momentum. Okay, so here we go. So the mass times v0 times vector. Now I just need to change these to t's. t theta, sine theta. So I'm going to make the momentum based on the parameters that I passed to the function. Uh, time is zero, dt is that, uh, and then this is going to be, while I can just say this, r equals r zero. So now I, I'm setting my, my parameter r to the beginning right there. That's fine. So then this is fine. This is fine. That's fine. Fine. I don't want to plot that. And what I don't want to print that. What I'm going to do is return. I just want the uh, x value, the final x value. So I'm going to say return uh, r dot x. And let's try this. Okay, so right here I had, uh, I, that's my range at 50 degrees. So let's just try and see if we get the same thing. So I'm going to say p range uh, 50 times pi divided by 180. That's my angle theta. V0 was, what did I say it was? 7? Oh, man, I forgot. 7, and then uh, vector 0, 0, 0. And let's print that. I don't think I have the same values. But... Okay, for, I, think, I think it's working. I think it's working. Okay, so now I can just call my function here. So what I want to do now is to make a graph of not x versus y, but up here, range versus theta in degrees. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say theta. I don't want to, I don't want to, oops, something weird's happening. I don't want to say theta is zero. If I launch it completely horizontal, it's not going to go anywhere. So let's say theta equals one degree, one times pi divided by 180. <clears throat> and then I'm going to I'm going to launch it, but I need to 
increase my angle theta by some amount. Let's increase it by a degree. So a d theta equals 1 times pi divided by 180. Uh, and I think we're good. So now I'm going to say while theta is less than 90. Let's say less than 89. So less than 89 times pi divided by 180. I think there is a way you can define angles in degrees, but I don't remember how to do it. Okay, the first thing I can do is find the range. So I'm going to say T range equals P range. Uh, I do need a, a V0. V start equals 7. And uh, yeah, the mass is in the function, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, so I need to give it an angle. So this is going to be theta. I'm looking up here. Look, I have to give it this angle theta. Oops. I have to give it, uh, let's go back down like that. I have to give it um, a initial velocity and initial position. So let's say the initial velocity is just this value. is going to be V start. And then the initial position is going to be the vector 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that, that's it. That did all the calculation for uh, <clears throat> how where it lands. Now I'm going to plot that. I know the angle and I know the range. So I can say f1.plot, and on the horizontal axis I want the angle, so it's going to be theta, theta, times theta is in radians. So I'm going to say times 180 divided by pi. And then my uh, vertical axis is going to be T range. Now I want to increase my value of theta and do it again. So I'm going to say theta equals theta plus D theta. And I think that should work. Let's run it. I have a feeling it's not going to work though, but, but it worked. Okay. So here you see that the maximum range is right here at 45 degrees. And I get the value too. Okay. Now let me just show you if I don't start at the origin and I do it again, let's start at actually two meters high and I run it. Uh, you'll notice that the maximum range is not 45 degrees, but 36.6 degrees. Okay, and I'm getting the value uh, from the graph. There's a better way to do this, but I, I like I like simple, right? Let's start simple. Let's use the graph uh, <clears throat> to find out this maximum range. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, but that is how we use functions in Python, and, and they're really powerful, okay? And I use them incorrectly all the time, but I still use them, and there you go functions in Python. The next we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do it with air resistance and that's really cool.